Hi guys and today we have a very special guest Dr Gazala an MBBS graduate thanks for joining Thank you so much for having me Shivam And today we will talk about the resources for USMLE step 1 and step 2 with Dr Gazala who has already cleared USMLE step 1 and step 2 so let's start firstly like what are the resources of USMLE step 1 and step 2 like the books all the study materials including the classes mock tests everything Okay So the good part is that now we have a lot more resources than we have, which we had earlier. So what I am telling are the most basic ones and the most popular ones. But that does not mean that we are just restricted to that. So everyone is open to explore more options. So for step one, the basic and primary two things are first aid, which is a book. It is like a high yield book which covers everything that you will need. And the second thing is U World, which is a question bank. these are two things which every student who is preparing for the usmle step 1 exam will have it so these are the basic things then we move next there is one more resource which is boards and beyond so boards and beyond is one resource that is explaining everything in a video format which is given in the first aid so in first aid you will just get one liners but then there is a lot more that is behind that and for a great understanding of that you can watch these videos then we have sketchy medical this is like a animated format so for microbiology and pharmacology which are very heavy subjects for your memorization you get these animated videos which make it really very simple for you to memorize the stuff so because it is in a story format and lastly for pathology we have another resource which is pathoma pathoma is by dr husain sattar and he has explained it brilliantly and it is not very um a uh, not a very high budget course or subscription so it is very affordable for every student so there is a video to it and also one book that goes along with it and with that you are good to go for the step 1 exam these resources are enough for you and then you are ready to go for the step 1 exam now coming to the step 2 ck step 2 ck because you have already covered up your basic sciences in this you will not need a lot of resources so one thing is first aid again you have first aid for step 2 as well but the first aid in step 1 will still be useful for you so you don't just throw away your step 1 first aid after you are done with your step 1 exam it is going to help you throughout and then you have u world so u world is a very important resource both for step 1 and step 2 other than uh, this you have another book which is master the boards which is by kaplan it is also a book which has holistically covered up everything so it depends on the person you should not increase your resources a lot so either you can go with the first aid step 2 or you can go with master the boards either one of them would be good for you the other thing that you can do for step 2 is once you are done with these two things which is one book and the question bank which is u world if you have more time then you should practice more questions and to practice more questions you can either take subscription for kaplan question bank or emboss question bank or you can do another round of u world questions So it really depends on the person how you want to do it. But U World you should do really well. Like you should know everything that U World is trying to give you. Only after that you move on to the other resources. And this is the like complete outline of all the resources for step one and step two CK. Okay, that was a great way in like concising all the resources together. But uh, please could you elaborate on the fact that when and how to use these study materials? Yeah, sure. So how to use it is whenever you are starting your preparation for step 1 in whichever year you are you would take your first aid book and as i said that first aid has everything but it has not explained everything in detail and you need a detailed understanding of everything so it will really depend on your basic knowledge from medical school that you have because if you know how your basic is So the number one thing that I suggest everyone is that you should take an NBME exam before you are starting your preparation. So NBME are self evaluation exams and these are like around sixty dollars for each exam. So take the NBME first before even starting your preparation. So now you know where you stand. You get a tentative score and you know that this is where I stand and now how much work do I need? The good part is that NBME also tells you about your weaknesses. So it will tell you that this subject you are weak in and these are the topics that you are weak in. So when you start your preparation, you will focus on these topics first. So now you will take your first aid and you will start from these topics which you are weak at. Alongside your first aid, you will go through the BNB videos. Now when you are watching the BNB videos, 
you will annotate your first aid book if anything they are explaining which is not already given in first aid and by annotate i mean just write down the important things don't highlight because if you start highlighting the whole book will you know get colorful so don't do this mistake just annotate if there is anything important then the next thing you do is to solve questions so these are the three things that are going simultaneously your first aid your bnb and your u world question these are the three things that will go simultaneously you have to do your u world questions every day only then you will get a hold of how to solve these questions again when you are doing u world if you find anything which you don't know already you add it to your first aid the other interesting resource is anki which is not very popular among the medical students in india especially this is a flash card app so in and this is completely free of cost for everyone so everyone can have it use this resource for spaced repetition this will really help you to remember everything because there is a lot of information for step 1 so anki is going to be that resource that will help you to just memorize all the heavy stuff that you are learning every day now we are left with two more resources which is sketchy for microbiology and pharma and the other one is pathoma for pathology for these three subjects you will not do bnb and instead of that you will do sketchy and pathoma and that's it this is pretty much what you require okay and which nbme is good to predict the score of step 1 and step 2 yeah so for step 1 the most predictable ones are nbme 16 and nbme 18 and for step 2 ck nbme 7 it might uh, under predict your score but it replicates what you are going to see in the exams so if you really want to get the feel of the exam nbme 7 is a good one and again every time because eventually this video will get old so if you want to make sure go to reddit on reddit you find the whole link where they have given all the data that which nbme is the most predictable and from there you can get an idea which one you should do Ideally, try to do all the NBMEs. So, when and how, like, do you utilize U World? Yeah, so U World you use along with your study material. You have to do the questions every day. Some people have this uh, restriction that they want to study everything first, and only then they will do the questions because they want the satisfaction that I have studied everything and now I will not get wrong answers. But you have to understand that U World is not evaluating you; it is a learning tool. so it is for you to learn even if you are getting 30% it really does not matter you have to just make sure that you are improving and learning from every mistake that you are doing so start u world early start doing the question so for example i would say if you are studying cardiovascular system complete the cardiovascular system from bnb first year whatever resources you are using and now start doing questions from u world and the right approach to do u world is you do the questions and you review the questions the same day because you will review requires a lot of time you have to focus and you have to be concentrated to understand everything that is given in u world so if you think that i am doing 40 questions in a day it takes me around 1 hour to do the questions and now when i am reviewing them it takes me around 4 to 5 hours so it is 6 hours and i cannot take out 6 hours in a day to solve u world then cut down the questions so if you are not able to do 40 questions cut down to 20 even if you cut down to 10 that is fine but If you are doing ten questions, then make sure you are reviewing those ten questions on the same day. And when you review these questions, you have to make sure that you are picking up the important points. You are making sure that what is the mistake you did in this question. You have to identify those mistake. You have to identify why you thought in a different way and why you did the wrong thing. Make a note of it. Make a Anki flash card out of it and just review it every day so that you are not repeating this mistake again. and annotate in your first aid anything extra annotate in your first aid and that is just the thumb rule to use u world okay and what would be your tip uh, regarding solving one block of u world in a day as medicos have a busy college days yeah so i can understand especially if someone is in internship or final year they will have a very busy schedule and it is difficult to cover one block as i said because it is one hour of solving the questions and then four to five hours to review all the questions So the best thing to do is uh, divide your time and break it down. So if you're not getting time to do forty questions in on a single go, divide it into ten, ten, ten. Okay. So you wake up in the morning before going to your college, do ten questions. Then while you are in your college and you get some downtime, just review those ten questions. Then another break, do ten questions. When you're back at home, do ten questions. Before you sleep, do ten questions. 
and this way you will complete 40 questions in a day so you were still being productive but you did not have that burden to do 40 questions and give one sitting for it so whatever is comfortable for you make that timeline for yourself and just stick to that timeline instead of 40 if you are able to do 30 that is also fine but don't overwhelm yourself because you you will have work at school and you have to do your word questions there is no compromise in either of the two okay so i'll put an end to the video here i guess we covered all the questions regarding the us mle resources for step one and step two it was a great discussion with you dr kasala thank you thank you so much